Welcome to this tutorial and let's start right away. I will create a new composition. Let's name this composition maybe main and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make this uh, 300 frames long and this will be full HD so uh, 1920 by 1080. Hit OK and uh, let's uh, go ahead and create the first layer and I'll go ahead and create a new solid. Let's name this solid to Meteor and let's go ahead and add our trap code particular effect to this layer all right so this is the default uh, look of the particular effect let's go to emitter let's set this uh, type to box and let's spread the emitter size x all right something like this actually let's set this back to 50 and let's first set the direction to be directional let's change the y rotation to 90 degrees and now you can see we have this motion so the particles are flying towards the right here and now we can go ahead and uh, rechange the size of this emitter and let's maybe scale this on the z and we don't really need a y value for this uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, make our particles fall uh, let's go to physics and let's set the gravity here maybe to something like 45 I think should work all right and let's grab this emitter position and just drag this here at the top so it's off the screen and let's go to emission extras and set the pre-run to 100 and this will just make sure that particles are already on the screen at the beginning of the timeline let's set the particle duration to maybe 10 seconds all right and this is looking fine for now let's maybe give the velocity random let's maybe increase this value a bit just so it's a bit more chaotic and i'm gonna go ahead and press numpad zero to preview a small portion of this you can see it's loading here on the green and this should be enough so just to get an idea of the motion uh, we can go back and change this later if necessary uh, this should be fine for now uh, I'm not gonna use actually uh, the particle for this or so the original particles I'm actually gonna use the aux system to generate the trails but before this let's actually just set the particles per second to a lower value maybe 15 all right let's go back to our aux system and if I turn this on just uh, set the emit to continuously you can see that it this creates a trail based on our original particles and now I can go ahead and set this size to zero here and this will just practically make our original particles uh, invisible because we won't be needing that uh, let's go back to our aux system and let's set the life here to maybe three let's start with a value of three and if I increase the particles per second here, now we should be getting a, a nice trail. And you can see that the spaces or rather the gaps between the particles are just sort of sort of starting to fill up and create this uh, seamless trail look. Uh, let's change the type to a cloudlet. All right. And let's uh, take a look at some of uh, the other settings here and maybe set the particles per second to five. Uh, let's take a look at the settings opacity will be fine for 50 for now let's go to opacity over life and let's use this preset over here so this will make sure that the particles fade out as they age uh, let's see what else let's maybe increase the size to 12 uh, this should be fine and let's maybe go to size over life and let's try to taper the beginning of our trails so i can uh, make a graph that looks something like this and now it just creates a small taper here at the beginning of the trails uh, let's set the transform mode to add all right and let's set the color over over life let's use this preset gradient over here and uh, let's make the first color let's use a bright yellow or rather more like a bright orangish color uh, we can change this later all right so let's start with that and let's create another point here uh, and choose a more 
uh, reddish yellow, uh, orange for this uh, and hit OK. All right, so we're starting to get get somewhere, and maybe over here, I can go ahead and just uh, create the smoke color, and maybe I'll use more red for this. All right, uh, let's see. Let's maybe set the transform mode to screen, and um, this is looking fine for now. But maybe. That's a little too much color on our third uh, option for the color here. So maybe I'm just going to go ahead and make this even darker. And if I turn on transparency, we can kind of get a better idea of how this will look. Uh, maybe we can go ahead and just create a simple background. So I'll press Ctrl Y to create a new solid. And I'm just going to go, gonna go ahead and add a generate ramp set this to a, be a radial ramp and let's take a look let's make the first color to be more towards white and the second color i'm gonna leave it to black and move this ramp beginning point and just offset the other point and create sort of like this looking ramp and uh, press ctrl d to duplicate this layer I'm going to go ahead and delete the ramp effect and I'm going to go ahead and look for fractal noise and I'm going to get uh, I'm going to add the fractal noise to the second layer. Uh, for my fractal noise settings, <coughs> I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to turn off uniform scaling. <coughs> Sorry. And maybe spread this out. So just stretch this uh, horizontally and actually just increase the scale here. Just uh, get a cloud looking uh, pattern going on. Uh, maybe if I set this, the fractal type to be, which one was it? I think twist or rather progressive and increase the complexity. You can kind of get some cloudish looking shapes, uh, which is fine. Uh, let's leave this as it is. And I'll just set the second layer. So this will be my fractal layer. And this is my ramp layer. Uh, I'm going to set the fractal to be soft light. All right, so soft light blending mode. And it's going to blend with the ramp effect. And maybe let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer. So that's layer adjustment layer. And maybe let's add a curves and just increase the contrast here. Uh, let's put all of these uh, below our meteor layer all right and maybe even just uh, grab all of these layers hit Control, shift and c to pre-compose and i'll name this background all right and let's step aside here and i'm gonna go ahead and actually delete this adjustment layer and i'm just gonna add the curves and all of the other effects that we're gonna use to this background layer in our main comp all right, so maybe just darken this up and just try to get a nice tone that works with our meteor uh, particles. Let's maybe add a tritone and uh, maybe color this a bit. Just use a nice red and turn on the blending mode. All right, and if I duplicate this layer so press ctrl d to duplicate let's set this layer uh, above our meteor layer and i'll set this to add and i'll create a new ellipse mask around this part here just to sort of get a bright spot um, out of this composition and just create a simple mask and feather this out so press f for feather and just feather this out and maybe drop down the blend with original and you just call as you're just kind of creating a nice uh, bright spot all right and now for the background maybe i can make this even darker and i'll, I'll actually just uh, i'm just gonna change this to a blue just so we get a little bit more contrast and Let's go inside our background and I don't want to spend too much time on this background. Uh, you can download the scene, the original scene that I made and uh, you can check out how I set up the background there. Uh, it's 100% After Effects. So uh, ideally you would use a stock photo of sky 
or stock footage of actual sky and it would make the whole effect look a lot better but I want to keep this 100% after effects so so inside this background layer I can duplicate this fractal noise and I can change the transform settings here just to get a little bit more detail and let's see maybe if I set this to the type to dynamic twist all right and maybe drop the opacity for this layer I don't know something like this all right so like I said I don't want to spend too much time on the background uh, let's go back to our meteor layer and our meteor is looking fine for now uh, we can actually go ahead and we can add some uh, color curves to this and maybe increase the contrast here um, you can see that we are getting a bit of orange in our flames here which is very nice and this is because this uh, color here so our, our third option for the color is not entirely black uh, so if I were to set this to completely black you can see that this gets rid of the the that nice orange effect we had so I'm just gonna undo that and you can see that let's take a second and I don't think I can undo the color change here so I'm just gonna set it back to this uh, very very dark orangey color that we had all right so you can see now that this is this is a little too bright so let me go back here and make this more towards 100% black and maybe even let's just make this even more red all right so you can uh, mess around with the colors as you want we can also go ahead to randomness inside this aux tab and maybe we can give the size a little randomness as well and make this a little bit more chaotic mm, all right let's go back to our curves layer and set this to rgb and maybe just increase the contrast here and you can do stuff like if you go to your red channel you can increase the highlights of the red channel you can even go to your blue channel and increase the blue shadows and this will just give it a nice blue tint just don't don't exaggerate with this so you can kind of see what this changes just give it sort of like a blue tint and just add a little bit more color that's obviously way too much uh, just a little bit of contrast here uh, maybe the opacity of these particles can be turned down a bit let's take a look uh, I think this is uh, 35 should be fine uh, one final thing here uh, I'm gonna add a stylized glow all right and you can see that this makes everything uh, a lot more opaque and let's increase the radius for this glow let's set the blend the composite original let's set this to none and this will just make it a little bit more uh, rather less opaque all right all right all right so we can have one layer for these and actually this is these are uh, way too much let's maybe drop this to two right because we're going to be adding uh we're going to be duplicating this layer and adding more layers of uh, meteors and i'm just not really happy with this background maybe increase the contrast and maybe something like this and increase the bright spot of course i'm going to go ahead and uh, actually just add a of an overall uh, let's see an overall adjustment layer and just uh, do some of the color correcting here all right but like I said you can check the original file and see the exact settings uh, that I've used if you're interested uh, another thing would be to actually mask out this uh, meteor layer and I'm gonna do this by creating a new solid layer this should be white and I'm just gonna create another mask around this part here press F for feather and feather this out and I want this part here basically to mask out the meteors so I'm just gonna rename this layer to mask drop this 
uh, on top of my meteor layer and this meteor layer I'm gonna set the track mat so this is uh, F4 to get this option here so set the track mat to be Luma inverted mat alright so now it's kind of fading in this uh, bright spot over here and just overall creating a more of a depth effect more of a 3d effect and maybe if I duplicate this layer and let's maybe drop the opacity for the second layer all right so like I said I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the background uh, actually this fractal noise is bothering me a, a bit it's uh, a little too intense I think and maybe this ramp can be a little brighter let's go back alright so that's a little bit more toned down and this is fine for now maybe the second background alright alright uh, I'm not gonna touch the background again <laughs> um, all right, let's take a look at the second uh, thing we're gonna do and I'm gonna save this just for uh, the sake of not losing everything and I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two layers and press ctrl D to duplicate and for example now for this second layer uh, which I'm gonna solo now uh, I can uh, actually just push this in space so if I increase the position Z uh, I'm pushing the particles in Z space and I'm just gonna need to readjust the positioning here let's make sure that everything is nice alright so now I have a second layer of uh, meteors that are in the background sort of and I can increase the particles per second for these and increase the size Z just make sure that this is nice and spread out all over our composition alright and maybe unsolo this and I'm gonna go ahead and add a blur and sharpen camera lens blur to this and set the blur radius to maybe 15 alright so you can kind of see that the effect that this creates now here in the original example I actually set this layer to add so it blends in a lot nicer with the background and for my opacity so press T for opacity and drop the opacity down quite a bit and maybe we can even increase the particles uh, even more maybe 10 alright so just this just gives it a little bit more depth and uh, you can go ahead and create multiple layers of the meteor but one uh, other layer that I'm gonna create is gonna be some meteors in the front of our screen so go ahead and let's just grab the original ones that we had press ctrl D let's place these at the top uh, alright uh, let's solo these and maybe give this a uh, different seed here just so it's not the same as our original layer and for these guys I'm just gonna do the opposite thing I'm gonna bring them closer to the screen by changing the Z position alright so now these are closer and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I'm gonna add, an, uh, I'm gonna add a camera lens blur and just increase the lens blur here turn on the repeat edge pixels and if I unsolo this and set this again to maybe screen uh, alright and set the opacity maybe just lower the opacity and just give it a different seed just so they're not overlapping here alright so now we have also some particles uh, in the front uh, alright so this is pretty much the effect uh, like I said you should check out the original file in the original example that was shown at the beginning of the video I used a different technique I used a texture for the sprite to generate all of these particles that form the trails so it's definitely worth checking out uh, just follow the link in the description of this video and you can download the project file uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time